Hi Scorpio, welcome to your general monthly reading for August 2020. Everything you need to know about this reading is in the description box below. If this is about another person, this could resonate with theirs or your moon rising or Venus sign. Right, Scorpio, tell me something good. <laughs> tell me something new. <laughs> Scorpio, August 2020. Come on. Okay, I'll take it. Four of Cups. <laughs> I take it. <laughs> no more towers. <laughs> Four of Cups, Three of Cups. Okay, looking better. Ten of Cups. Yay. Queen of Cups, even better. Um, I read that as Cancerian Temperance. I'll take it. Sagittarius, Queen of Pentacles. Yay. Okay, so we got friendship here. Um, Capricorn. Seven of Cups. Look at all these cups. Even there's cups there. One pinnacle. All right, so we, we're, in, we're in our cups of feelings here. There you are. Come on. All right. So that's five, four, five. We got two queens. So we're dealing with friendly advice here. What was that? Really? Really? Okay, the lovers. Okay, it's about a choice. Uh, Gemini, Taurus, or Libra there. So is this about a choice? Is this about choosing? Choosing you or choosing other? Hmm. Okay, what's this Three of Cups about for Scorpio? Seven of Swords. On its face, the Three of Cups, Seven of Swords, that could be cheating. That could be an affair. Just saying. Just saying. Let's see here. Okay. It says Ten of Cups. <laughs> the Lovers. All right. I have a feeling you're not going to like what I have to say. Not because it's familiar, but if it's it's a it might be a different take on it. What's this Queen of Cups? I feel like this is saying, you know what? You need to be at one or at peace with your, the choice that you're making. Um, this jump, let's see what it is. It's six of swords. You're halfway in, you're halfway out. You're thinking about leaving, but you're not doing anything. So this is like halfway. You're not this way, you're not. This. So here's the thing. This is... Um, for the Scorpios I'm reading for, I think this is about you needing to be at peace with the choice you've made. Because I, I feel like there's, um, on his face this could be cheating, but there's you there's a different agenda here with what might look like to everybody else. There's different agenda going on underneath. It could be that you're involved with a group of friends or something and you and another one are kind of doing things on the down low, but you haven't told the group of friends yet. This could also be cheating and you're just kind of like, you know what, I'm kind of over this. Um, and this, this is about you needing to be happy with the choices that you have made. Specifically, can you live with the choices? Can you be happy with the choices that you're making with yourself? This isn't just saying, you know what, that's your bed, lie in it. You chose this situation, so shut it. Maybe, but also you have the power to change that if you're not happy with it. Um, so I think this is asking you to take a look at, are you happy with what you're choosing for yourself? Are you happy with your present day commitments to things, your devotion to things, What's what you're investing in for your future happily ever after? Are you okay with that? This is Queen of Cups or Scorpio. Ace of Cups, okay. Because are you happy? Is this giving you the warm fuzzies? Okay, you know what I mean though. Is this is this making you feel fulfilled emotionally? Are you okay with who you are in this scenario here? That's what this is asking. This isn't anything that's happening to you. This is having you take a look at yourself and the choices you're making and what you're doing in the public versus what you're doing on the sly. Can you live with that, those choices? And if the answer is yes, fist bump. If it's not, okay, well, everybody does it. I'm just about rectifying it. This is temperance. It's not about the shame of it. It's about informing you, okay, well, don't do that anymore. Or, or work to fix it, work to rectify it somehow. That's your, your turning point. 
What's this temperance? This temperance. Ah, bless the angels for showing up. <laughs> What's this temperance about? That could be Sagittarius. But look at these queens. Okay. Queen of Swords. Uh huh. The, okay, so because. <laughs> Because you're asking those questions like, am I secure? Do I feel good about the choices that I'm making and what I'm aligning myself with and what I'm doing that maybe my friends don't know about? Can I live with this for myself when I look at myself in the mirror and whatnot? Um, this is calling that into question. This is saying, you know what, take a look at this. It's not about searching for something outside of yourself for that fulfillment. This is about, are you fulfilling your own needs? Are you happy? Can you live with the choices you're making? Are you making yourself happy? This isn't about um, finding that connection with someone that's going to make you feel this. This is, a, this could, this is about self-love. And you might be nursing some wounds, which is why you might be settling for doing something that you're not very proud of, but you might be doing on the down low. So this is saying, hey, that's it doesn't work like that. Your friends could help you with this if you let them in on it this is also um, needing to take a look at at your situation and, and get that balance back get that harmony back and and being you you have no problem looking at what is and being realistic and and very um assertive about it i i think you're kind of hungry for this perspective but i think once you have this perspective it means putting an end to this and i don't know that you want to do that um, I think that's why it's so hard because you're relating to it emotionally rather than realistically. You're looking at how you feel about something rather than what is best for you. What's this Queen of Pentacles? Or looking at how you feel about something or how you don't feel and thinking how you don't feel can be resolved in this situation still. It's almost like, okay, I'm feeling this and this and this. I'm not feeling good about this. Maybe if I tweak it this way, I've, no, no, the very dynamic or nature of the situation is can't be altered. Meaning, <clears throat> the reason why you might not be feeling connected or feeling really emotionally secure is because of the choices that you've been making, not because the thing that you've made a choice about is wrong. The, the situation is, sorry, the person in the situation isn't wrong so much as the situation is wrong. And you keep trying to, not you, but it could be that you're trying to make an impossible situation work and you're attaching feelings to its success as feelings of value about yourself. For instance, and this is a for instance, say we're dealing with a situation where there's an affair here. And you really are feeling kind of disconnected and you, you just, you feel such a connection, but you're just so sad when you're not together and you've really attached your emotions to this person in the affair, but you just don't understand why you're not happy and why you can't live with the decisions that you made or you're struggling to feel secure emotionally in this situation. And so you double down on your investment with this person. And that's where the flaw is. You're thinking again, an example, that the disconnect that you feel is because you miss the person so much or why can't this and that, whatever. The disconnect you feel is you're in a situation, if you are, that is flawed, which inherently is gonna make the dynamics flawed. That's the disconnect. So it's like trying to manage a situation that shouldn't be, instead of going, oh, I shouldn't be here, that's why I feel sad. Not like, oh, I, I miss this person so much, I wish we could be together. Maybe that person's married, maybe this is an affair, and it's like, hey, wait, look at why you're sad. Is it, are you sad, oh, I miss them. No, 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 you're sad because you're not getting your needs met because you've attached to somebody that is unavailable. So that's where the sadness is. So, sorry, uh, long-winded example, but the point is, look at what you have decide, decided to hitch your happily ever after to and see if that, is what is amiss here. Because it could be that you've aligned yourself with an impossible situation. And then this is about taking a cold hard look at why. Why would you choose imbalance? Why would you choose to look at or to, to attach yourself to something, and you are, you're thinking about it, to attach yourself to something that is not going to bring you fulfillment, that you're gonna to have to sneak around, hide from your friends, or to where you can't really tell 
all those around you what's going on. Why would you maneuver like that? Why would you position yourself like that? Not shaming. I'm saying ask yourself. That's what this is. Taking a good hard look at what is created in order to restore balance again. To figure out a solution so that you can feel fulfilled and happy. Because being more devoted or just missing them harder is not going to bring the situation about to what you desire. What you desire is connection. Go find somebody that can connect. Do you know what I mean? Of course you do. You understand what I'm saying. As an example. All right. Queen of Pentacles. What's this Queen of Pentacles about? Seven of Wands. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Yay. Love it. Okay. Because, because of what I just said for 22 minutes, whatever the heck it was, that awareness comes out and this longing and like oh, wanting to feel that emotional fulfillment gets transmuted to, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm pulling back. I'm going to, I'm going to bring in other, I'm not going to hide from my friends anymore. I'm not going to kind of be under myself and kind of sour puss and, and kind of closed off or, or biding my time until an impossible situation maybe will come to fruition. I'm going to look at it realistically and I'm going to make some changes so that I feel stable and secure. And this might even be you detaching enough from that situation to where you can make room for lots of others, specifically dating. This feels like, I'm just gonna say it, that you have attached yourself to a situation where you're waiting for someone to come around and choose you and you feel sad and you miss them, but really you miss being valued and connected to somebody. So these are designed to be general readings and most of them have been about work or friendship, but this seems like it's about a relationship, the way it's coming through. And so your lack of feeling good about yourself or feeling emotionally connected is because you're with somebody that can't give you what you want. It, it's simply that you chose poorly, not that you're unlovable or that you're, um, you just have been overbearing or you haven't been available enough or you need to be more this. There's nothing you need to do here except for choose differently. Choose differently. Choose you. Choose balance. Look at the perspective honestly and go from wanting this to making this for yourself and making room for others and getting back out there. This is kind of sequestering yourself and doing things in secret. This is putting yourself back out there. This is pulling back your power and putting yourself back out there. Fist bump. Because <laughs> the, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't. I don't like that. I, I feel like there's. It's a a misconception because everybody says, "Oh well, if I just this, no. If you just nothing, it's not your fault. You just chose poorly. There's nothing you need to do except for choose differently. You don't need to be more interesting or more this or that. You shouldn't be with that person anyway. There was somebody else. If it applies, just saying. I'm using that as an example because it, it's it's very hopefully obviously shows how that beating up on yourself can be flawed as far as oh i miss them so much no you miss being valued find somebody who can value you what's this seven of cups seven of cups. i love this i love how this gets transmuted because this is you going oh no okay put myself back out there that's what's missing here getting getting over the hump and realizing you know what i miss i miss connection and being valued of course i would like it to be with this or that or whatever but I'm not doing myself any favors by keeping myself in lockdown mode here as much as I can. This, I'm saying you, that as much as you can put yourself back out there. Um, but it's like you've been kind of wrapped up in this one issue and you're, this is you looking at it realistically and then um, choosing to do differently once you realize what you want. And wanting to get this gratification or opening up to others to get that gratification, not just hanging it on one situation or one person or one kind of impossible outcome. Do you know what I mean? That kind of, that could change, that could not come to fruition. And then you're thinking it's your fault or, oh gosh, why, why can I not be happy? It, just choose differently. Take a look at what you're doing. You're look, take a look at your choices, you know? What's this? So yeah, take a look at your choices. What's this seven of cups? No lecturing. Two of Pentacles, yay. Okay, so, 
So once you put yourself back out there, once you choose differently, once you back up, reroute, put yourself back out there, don't beat yourself up for, for hanging yourself up on something that hasn't come to fruition yet. Things like that take time to work out. It happens. We all do it. It's fine. Recalibrate. Put yourself back out there. Take matters into your own hand. Pull back your power. Um, and then before you know it, you're going to have more choices than you know what to do with. You're going to have people coming out of the woodworks. Oh, hey, hi. <laughs> So whatever you're doing that you're not feeling fulfilled out, this is about diversifying and letting other in. Not to fulfill your needs per se, you're doing that yourself. But once you have that under control and you're back in your own power, then you can move forward with that. So figuring out what your issues are and going, you know what, this isn't making me happy. I want to be loved and connected more than I want that person now, it's shifted. Instead of wanting only that person and only focusing on that, I'm the example again, this is you going, I don't want the person so much as I want to feel adored and loved. So I'm going to actually see what's out there. I'm going to cast my net. <laughs> I'm going to see what's out there, see if I can. And this is you, I mean, quite possibly, this is you juggling a lot of choices. This also could represent the struggle between what's in front of you, what you might have found in the place of this, what's in front of you that could be a good thing, but you're kind of waffling and going, oh, I don't know, because there's parts of this situation that I like and there's parts of that situation that I like. That's okay. That's okay. The struggle happens, but it's about staying open. It's not about staying focused on that one thing that you were hinging your desires and happiness on. That's not going to give it to you. It's not. So open yourself back up to what else is out there. Um, and, and please don't beat yourself up. Please know that that uh, is part of it. But there's also a choice that you um, also, whatever you do is, is a choice. And I think when we forego choice, because feelings, we almost feel owed for things to work out the way we feel they should. I feel I'm feeling for it. It should, it should work out. Look how much I'm feeling. Stop it. This is you getting your power back. And being in control of your emotions and, and juggling that and wrestling with it and choosing differently because this becomes more feeling that connection with self and feeling valued is more important than doing things on the down low that you have to kind of sacrifice your values for. You know what I mean? Okay. Oh, good Lord. That's for Scorpio. Got all of that one. Both barrels, I'd say. That's for Scorpio. Knight of Ariel. So Knight of Pentacles. Yay! Trustworthy, understanding, devoted, and funny. There is so much to accomplish. Make a very detailed plan. Watch, or being watched over by someone kind. Yay! Okay. <laughs> or nagged at. <laughs> being nagged. <laughs> okay, so this is, I think that's where this comes in right here. Because this needing to find balance in this sort of this, you know, am I, am I aligning with what I truly value? Am I making the right choice? Can I live with it? Do I feel solid and secure and emotionally sound over the choices that I'm making? Or is it like, I'm, you know, this is recalibrating that. And we got the Knight of Pentacles energy here, taking back your power and proceeding methodically. There might be some hiccups. There always are. That's all right. You got that. So Knight of, this could be Taurus. Um, so yay, this is your security in mind. You're in charge of it. Balancing choices instead of hiding from accountability. Hold on, okay, this one. What else for Taurus? What else for Scorpio? I'm looking at the same Taurus. You're going to look at the timestamp and go, oh my gosh, she's going to yell at us. <laughs> because if, it, if it's a not intense reading, it's like, oh, 12, 13 minutes. This one's like, oh, 22 minutes. Enlightenment. Pursue spiritual growth. Yes, that's what this is right here. Taking a look at things and being honest about what you see. And then opening yourself up to what's possible because you now have a good handle on what you want. And that's, you're reconnecting with yourself. That, I like that. I think this happens when we kind of attach to something and give our power over it or, or give up our power. You know what I mean? Like you, you want something, so you emotionally attach 
And there's almost this logic that if, if it doesn't work out, it's like, well, just keep waiting, keep thinking positive, keep waiting. Or maybe if you sweeten the pot a little bit and did this. And so eventually you just kind of are always living for or trying to manage something that maybe you need to think second or maybe you need to rethink you know what i mean you, you've aligned yourself with something that's not going to bring you what you thought it might have and instead of and myself included you know looking at that realistically we kind of just hunker down for the long haul in the name of patience and loyalty and it's like eh, maybe not maybe maybe this is about recalibrating and pulling back and and being open to other because i've got myself back i can be open again that's where Okay, seduction, passion, and romance await. I feel like that's part of this right here. I feel like that's why there's such a pull is there, there's some kind of some kind of this about this situation and you know attraction and chemistry. That's a lot, you know. So, um, but it's not all there is, and I think that's realizing it right here and then being open to other or more once you realize what you truly want and that you are all that and that you can bring it to you you're just looking in one spot you can start looking in other spots you don't need just the one spot if you're asking by doing that by kind of detaching and, and dating and pulling back is going to make this person come running um i i don't think you'll care i think this is a bit of a sting for you and once you, you that it's, it's almost like oh no nobody does that to me so you're going to be pulling back and I don't know that this person is going to get the same access or a second chance to you. I don't know that this is a, a long-term thing. I think this might be kind of a new thing. Um, it doesn't feel heavily laden, but it does feel like the, the behaviors might be a pattern. So this might be a new person, but the same dynamics are there that um, you're, you've met somebody and it makes them very attractive that they might not be so available or that you it, that nobody else would know about it and it's kind of like you know that it kind of makes it exciting and attractive and it adds to that sort of seduction and mystery and whatnot and i think this is you kind of start, <clears throat> starting to excuse me question this and dare i say outgrow it <clears throat> realizing that you know i think i want more i don't think i want to wait to hear if we can this weekend or this or that i, I kind of want somebody that wants to see me right now so, all right, okay, this one, for Scorpio, oh gracious, 23 minutes, what else for Scorpio? <clears throat> three of Pentacles on its side, and okay, three of Pentacles on its side, um, you, yeah, you're not really, you're kind of doing this isn't a really serious thing six of pentacles no six of cups re, excuse me reverse so you're you've got the three of pentacles on its side and the six of cups reverse this is something that neither one of you are really putting a lot of effort into but there's a lot of emotional attention on this issue for you and it's not worth it i'm just saying right now it's not worth it you need to cut your losses and move on this is something that you feel like you can't let go of that's okay do it anyway it's not serving you well it's it's sunk cost it's investing emotionally or attaching emotionally to something that's not going to give you the return on what your emotional investment is and it's going to twist you up it's going to get you all in your feelings and you've got you know people to date <laughs> so, um i mean as much as possible right now but this is you you've got better and more waiting for you to just kind of be twisted about one thing and the only reason that that's so appealing to you is because of the dynamic surrounding the one thing it's the mystery and seduction and all of that around it versus the the person itself perhaps so um this it once you get your mind right about it and see it for what it is this is about you shifting your focus to where you're the one that's kind of waiting to see what offers come in and juggling those <laughs> and being able to find that with someone else that is actually available for you. All right, shutting up, 25 minutes, good gracious. Okay, all right, Scorpio, that's a heavy duty month, August, for you. Okay, 
All right. Um, I, I know this was long. Thank you for stopping by. I hope to see you in the next reading. Much love to you. Um, you never cease to uh, amaze me because just when it's like, oh, what are you doing? It's like, oh, no, you rally. You got this. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> okay. All right. I hope to see you in the next reading. Take care.